I guess, uh, how, how are the safeties looking? Or are they up to where you want them to be yet? Or, uh? I think that's a work in progress, mm -hmm. right? I think uh, anytime you come, over, come into a new group of guys, uh, you, you want to make sure they understand the culture, number one, that you want to have within the group. And I think you want them to understand uh, your expectations. And so we spend a lot of time creating those expectations and making sure that is, is crystal clear uh, on the field, off the field. Uh, person or player, that's a, that's a huge deal here. And I think you have to make sure they understand the technique, right? So I think some guys look at me like, don't make me a robot. And it's like, I'm not trying to make you a robot. I'm trying to make sure your technique is so perfect that when you get into a game situation, you just fall into that technique. And so um, it's been good so far, really good so far. And uh, appreciate they the buy-in. getting to know you too, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, we talked uh, this, this last week about truth, touch, time, tension. That's how you build trust, right? And so you got to tell them the truth about yourself. They got to tell you the truth about themselves. So, you know, we have them fill out questionnaires on, on uh, Google Drive. And, you know, they send in all these different, like, crazy questions about themselves. Uh, stuff they're probably looking at, like, who's this guy asking these weird questions? <laughs> but they're, they're to a point. Their personality review questions and deals like that. And so, um, and then touch, that's a, the time you get. Touch is a, them. So the time you're spending with them. And the time is the overall time it takes to build that trust. And then tension is always going to come. And so when tension comes, how do we react? Do we react with with love and wisdom, or do we act with hate and negativity? And so making sure the guys understand we're not reacting with hate and negativity. You know, if we give up a touchdown in the first quarter against Iowa State, it's not, oh, he did that. No, it's like, oh, let's fix this, and let's let's go forward uh, in the positive direction. So. Uh, Christian Morgan's been here a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, how much does it help having a guy like him? Uh, it helps a lot. So he, he, uh, he knows the defense uh, really well, and so, um, you know, for him, we're, we're playing him at a number of different spots, free and, and star. And so, you know, I think when you look at that and double training somebody in two different positions, they've never really played in this system. It's not necessarily him being a new player, but it is new positions. And so when you look at playing new positions, that's a different world. And so I think that's been good for him. His plate is loaded, uh, right? And so, um, and so we're keeping him busy, that's for sure. For you, how was the transition? Was it an adjustment or was it, did it feel a little bit like, or does it feel a little bit like LSU? Mm -hmm. Uh, it feels like home, number one, because of the people. And so this was our, our dream job. And so if we wanted to be anywhere in the country, uh, this is where we wanted to be. And so, you know, I told the players, parents, both in the safety group, uh, in the initial Zoom, and the parents of the specialists, you know, I'm not going anywhere. This is where I plan to be for a very long time. You know, if we could be here the next 10 years, we would love that. If we could be here the next 20, we'd love that even more. Uh, we're not chasing jobs. That's, that's not what we're trying to do. You know, my wife has a, a very, very strong support system here with the coaches' wives. A lot of our best friends are here. A lot of my personal best friends are here. So this is where I've wanted to be uh, since I had to leave LSU and go to Nevada. It just didn't work out initially. So the transition period, uh, it felt like home, but then there's a lot of stuff to, to do, right? And so there's the, the star, the free, the week, there's special teams. And so the hours have been, uh, it's a lot of hours, but that's, that's if you're doing what you love, it doesn't bother you, right? And so I think now it is starting to slow down now that we're like moved into the house and you're like, oh, okay, where's my deodorant at? <laughs> right? That's one of those things you don't think about and you get into it and you're like, I don't know where my deodorant is at. It's 4.30 in the morning and I'm going to have to figure this out or I'm going to smell really bad all day. So that's not a good feeling. And so uh, just figuring out all that stuff and like where's the stuff at in the house? You know, who are my players? How do they react to this coaching? You know, um, my coaching staff like around me, the guys around me, just getting to know them a little bit more. Uh, not necessarily the defensive staff, but you know, everyone um, that I didn't know originally. And so all of that has been good though. I think we've been Welcome with open arms, and, and Waco's a great place. Baylor's a great place with great people, and so that is the, the beauty of, of what we're able to do right now. Is, is working for Dave Aranda the same now as it was as it, when he's at, at D.C.? Uh, no, it's different. He's grown a lot, and so he's, a, he's an excellent head coach. He does a great job of building culture. And so, you know, my role at LSU was to basically, like, live inside of his brain and kind of anticipate what he needed, right? And so a lot of people are like, how well do you know Coach Aranda? It's like extremely well because, you know, we, I was his right-hand man at LSU for four years. And so when you're talking about times of tension, you get to see who people are. And so I know who he is in times of tension um, and when things are going good and going bad. Uh, and so from that aspect, I knew who I was, was, uh, was going to work for. But to see how much he's grown as a head coach, to see the way that he does it, I think is unique. Uh, really unique. I don't think there's a lot of places in the country are doing things the way that we do them. A lot of people talk about family. A lot of people say stuff about like person over player, and honestly, it's a it's a it's a line of uh, it's a line of lies, different stuff, right? And so here it's actually real. And so I think he does a great job of making sure the assistants are not just doing football, 
uh, making sure they're taking care of their guys, uh, taking them out to, to eat, making sure they're getting to know them, having personal meetings, talking about academics, you know, and, and making sure that they're going to be equipped for life after football. When you come into a new group like this, how much do you rely on old film versus just kind of starting with a fresh fresh slate? I think you watch old film, but then, you know, it, it helps that I'm friends with Powell, and so the guy that coached these guys before, you know, we had a lot of conversations about the group, but, you know, to his credit, he wasn't going to, like, badmouth anybody if they had issues in the past, um, and I didn't want that. I think you want to start fresh, and I told each player that, you know, it's a clean slate, man, let's, let's go. And so... Uh, for a lot of our guys, they don't have a lot of film. And I was told the safety group, like, how many of you guys have over 100 snaps on defense at Baylor? And I was like, maybe two, maybe. And so a lot of the guys that played big roles here last year are gone. So this is a completely new group, completely new team, and just buying into, like, that building process of every day and, and where you want to be when it's all said and done and understanding where you want to be and what it takes daily. And so it's not necessarily a situation where, you know, everyone talks about the process, the process, the process. Well, it really is, and there's joy in the process. And so I know the basketball team talks about, you know, culture of joy. I'm into that whole deal. I love it. And so understanding that, so it's the daily, like, the daily work with your with your boys that you're gonna see 20 years from now, and you don't talk so much about the wins and losses as you do about like the time spent together. I know that's how it is with the guys that I played with in college, and so understanding that daily sacrifice for things that you may want at the moment that you can't do, like a couple days ago when everyone else on campus is partying, it's like, no, nah, that's not what we're doing, you know, because we're we're gonna sacrifice now for what we want most in the end, and understanding that, and I think the guys do a number one because of the culture, but number two because of you know them and who they are. They've done a good job of that. Do you feel like their eyes are you know, wide with the, the fact that they're going to have to fill into some of those bigger roles this year to feel like they're ready for that challenge? No, they're ready. And so the whole, the whole thing you want to build within the group is, hey, everyone has to be ready at all times because, you know, you're playing star right now, but in week three you may be playing week safety. So, you know, learn the position we have you in, but we want to see – you know what you can do in all spots and so a lot of the things that we're doing in terms of individual drill work is cross training them and trying to teach them conceptually rather than just you know hey this is me and this is what I do in this position no it's a conceptual deal so if we're teaching a concept understand this piece this piece and this piece and when you teach them in that way I think they're less bright eyed and like whoa right and they start to go okay they're locked in because when you're talking about football players there's like three phases right there's the first phase where they really don't even know anything and they're just running around and there's a second phase where, okay, they know what they're doing, but then they're not making plays. And there's a third phase where they know what they're doing and they're making plays. And then the final, the, really the fourth phase is like, they're on autopilot and they can really go get it. So. Who are you looking at at the star? Uh, a lot of guys. I mean, <laughs> we've repped uh, four guys there so far, four or five. So we've repped uh, LaRondo, um, we've repped uh, Romario, or LaRondo. I always, I'll never know if I'm saying it right. I always ask some snacks. So, so snacks, <laughs> Romario Noel, uh, and uh, um, who else? Uh, Alfonso Allen, uh, nickname is Peanut. And then uh, Christian is also a rep there as well. And then Griffin Speaks. And so we've repped five guys at Star, but we're teaching them all, okay. right? Because, you know, I was talking to Devin Lemire. And I was like, hey, man, week four next year, you might play Star. Know it, right? Because he started at that position, you know when he was an earlier enrollee last year. So I think the biggest thing with the group is, like, don't just get caught up in, like, you're star, you're free, you're weak. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a football player, right? Learn the jobs. Learn this job really well, but know, it, know what's going on around you. Because the more you know what's going on around you, then you know the why, right? And then if you know the why, then you can get into, hey, in cover three, this is the, this is the negative here. This is where we're going to have trouble. Cover two, that's the negative. Man, that's the negative. And so understanding the stress points within each defense after you learn – the scheme at each spot is the, the next level of like graduation for the players. It seems like Devin's another one. You mentioned him, but I mean, yeah. he's a guy that actually has some experience, not, yeah. maybe not a ton. but Yeah, he's incredibly intelligent, yeah. conscientious, works hard. And so, you know, he came to my office today and he was like, man, you're really, you're really crazy about this, like, run to the ball stuff. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's a big deal. It's like, you pulled me after I ran to the ball, but I didn't tag off. And I was like, yeah. He's like, but I've, I learned, and I was like, I think that's the whole deal. So he takes coaching really well. He's extremely intelligent. He can answer all the questions. So him, Devin Neal, those guys are, are smart, um, and, and they understand the defense. And so we've got some guys that I'm very excited about, and we've got younger guys in the group they're helping bring along. So the, the safety group as a whole is very talented, and they just have to continue to buy in each day to, to committing to game reps and understanding that. So.
Has there been any one person that's kind of stood out as a leader in that, in that group? No, we're still, we're still going through trying to figure out what that's going to be, right? And I always tell people, like, leadership doesn't necessarily mean you've been here a long time. Leadership, you know, when I've been other spots in like Division Three, where sophomores were leaders of the football team over seniors, and so I think, uh, I think you can mold leaders 100%, and I think that's something that you definitely do mold. But I think some people have the natural ability to lead, and so the people that have the natural ability to lead, whatever their leadership style may be, you want to. Uh, and try to empower them to lead in that way. And so if they're going to lead in a certain way, some guys want to be vocal. I'm not big on vocal leadership, honestly. Like on the field, I want you to communicate and check, but I'm not into all the talking. I'm more about action. And so if you can show it to me, that's a whole lot more important. You know, actions speak louder than words in, in all phases of life and just trying to teach the guys that. Chris, and you've probably been, you're probably the most experienced safety back there. You feel like you need to take on a leadership role? Yes, sir. Uh, it's really the reason I came back was to, you know, be able to spread my wings to the young guys. You know, like you said, I'm in the leadership role now. It's a different spot. It's a little bit different without having, you know, Terrell, PD, JT. Um, but yeah, I wanted to come back, you know, leave a legacy, man. The young guys behind me, I want to build them up, get them as ready as I can possible so they can produce in the game. What's that been like training at a couple other spots? On our, what position specifically were you last year? Okay, so last year I was the weak safety. Now you're trying it, or training then, at the other two, right? Yeah, now I'm training out the other two. So I'm playing um, JT spot last year, right. and then I'm playing a little bit of star too. I'm mixing. But uh, like you said, it's, it's good training the other two. You know, um, it's good expanding my football knowledge. Um, every day I come in and try to work and just, you know, try to learn the system so I can help everybody else around us so we can play sound ball in the back end. Is that going to make everybody more versatile, that oh. everybody can play those spots? Yes, sir, most definitely. Um, versatility is something that Coach Wheat's preaching. He teaches us all three uh, safety positions, so we all can just plug and play wherever. Does a lot change just in terms of what you guys do daily in practice based on Coach Wheat coming in? Uh, I'll say a little bit. Like, you know, the Indy's different. You know, East coach that comes in, East position coach, they bring in their own drills. But for the most part, the fundamentals of football are the same. So we practice, you know, we practice tackling, we practice block disengagement, stuff like that. What were your initial impressions of Coach Week? Oh, man, like, Coach Week, super hard worker, man. That's the first thing that jumps out whenever I, uh, I think about him. You know, he puts a lot of work behind the scenes that uh, all of us on uh, defense and special teams appreciate. Sounds like he wants to make you perfect yep. like, in everything you do. <laughs> yep. That's a hard thing to live up to, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's kind of hard. Like, it was kind of hard for me to accept that, too, because, you know, because we so hard on me. It's like every step, every every little eye discipline, all that has to be perfect with him for you to grade out high on the, on his rep sheet. So, but it's good. It's going to help us a lot in the um, long run. What are the impressions about what the young guys look like? Oh, man, the, the young guys really stepping up, man. The young guys the young guys are so good, man, it makes me want to step up my game, like make sure I got to have my stuff good. You know, like them two right there, you know, Devin, Snacks, uh, the other Devin, Devin Lemire, they all making plays, man. They all flying around, and I think we're going to be good. Are there things you see in practice or the qualities that they have where you watch them and you're like, oh, that reminds me of that guy that I played with or that guy? Yeah, but like Snacks is kind of his own player. He's a little bit different than Petrie in the sense that he can uh, cover a little bit better. So, you know, we're going to use him like in different ways. And, you know, Devin, Devin kind of remind me of myself too. Real physical guy, real smart guy. And then the other Devin Amir, he's real range. I really like his game too. So, you know, I try to take things from each of them. And then, you know, I also try to teach them some of my skills and knowledge that I've learned over the years of playing football, you know, help them out that way. Is there anything in particular you can learn? from Petrie from last year and the way that he kind of handled that leadership role that, that you can take into this season? Yeah, you know, Petrie was so special, man. He he came in every day. He worked so hard. You know, I don't think anybody can replicate what he did, but we can take his work ethic, how he came in every day. He took notes. He stayed extra. He took care of his body. He practiced like a pro. He did everything like a pro. So um, I say a lot of us, we're, we're still trying to build up our legacy to till we can get to Petrie's level, but um, you know, it's just good uh, having somebody like that who we can look back on, look what he did, and, you know, help us out that way. Christian, with all those guys you, that you played with leaving, mm -hmm. how close did you come to deciding, hey, this is my time, too, to go to the NFL? 
Uh, not really, cause I didn't I didn't finish the year how I wanted to finish. So I knew that I wanted to come back and correct some things, and I knew that it was gonna be my time soon. You know, with all the guys, I feel like last year uh, I was more of a guy who was like, I'm just gonna do my job. I'm gonna let them. I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna let them make plays. But you know, this year um, I'm more of thinking like. I got to be that playmaker now, man. I got to make these plays. You know, like I'm a dog. I gotta, I gotta get in there. I gotta make these plays. So I think it's, I think it's just more of an opportunity for me to go out there and show my true skills. Cause you know, I feel like I'm the best safety in the uh, Big Club. So I got to come out here and show that. Coach talked about, you know, kind of wanting to sacrifice things for you know, what it can bring in four or five months. He mentioned even like earlier this week, not going out and partying. With all the other students, so you can focus on this. How easy or difficult is that to do as college kids to, in the end, to do that? Yeah, I say for me, it's not that difficult because I'm kind of a loner anyway. Like, I like to stay by myself. Like, I know uh, for D, I, I stayed in. I stayed in. I was tired after practice. I took a whole bunch of reps. I just wanted to get home and watch the film. But like you said, like regular college uh, athletes or students, it, it is kind of hard because, you know, you take in a distraction that's outside and um, really just – I mean, I just say it's hard just in general just because the distractions around, man. We got to keep the main thing the main thing. Now, it sounds like you are all practicing at different positions, trying to learn every position. What's that like, and has that been a good thing? Uh, it's really been like a mind twister so far because usually you're having like one set position and being like, oh, I got to do this and that. But I feel like it overall adds more versatility to the whole secondary as a whole. Okay. So have you mainly been working at the weak, or is that your primary spot? Or? Uh, yes, sir. I've been mainly working at the weak safety spot, but I've also been, um, like, I've been doing mental reps at the other spots as well, like, Free just in case. Star. Yes, sir. What did you learn from guys like uh, PD and JT? I learned a lot, really. It's just, just to keep your head down and grind. Like, Petrie, for example, watching his story was amazing. How he came with that class and like came from like nothing and just worked his worked his tail off, and uh, JT as well. He did the same thing and they just like it was just fun being around them, just like putting your head down, working, keeping just great energy, being fun, laughing all the time. It was fun being around them. Are you, what's your next step you want to take to feel comfortable <laughs> with that rep increase that you assume you're going to get this season? I feel like to take my next step, I need to just have like a high motor at all times. Because a thing I've noticed with myself is if I'm tired, I tend to like slow down something too much. I just need to keep going, just keep playing fast and be me. What were your initial impressions of Tess Wheat? Uh, my initial impressions, I'm not like, I don't judge too hard. Like, I like all different types of coaching styles. Like, with my dad, like, I was used to having like just someone on my tail, just being like nitpicky, critiquing everything. So I'm fine with the way Coach Wheat does things. The other guys didn't like, they didn't approve of it so much, but you just, you learn new things, you get used to it. So we're all liking him. Is the main thing, because he talks about being perfect in everything. Is that is that a hard standard to live up to? Not necessarily. I, I understand where he's coming from, because it's different in the secondary, like, D-line, like, you're not going to be perfect all the time, be in your gap all the time. When it comes to the secondary, you got to do this and that because if you don't, that's the difference between a touchdown or having another down. Is there a – John talked about all the guys that have left. Is there a pressure to feel those shoes or do you look at it like that? Mm, not necessarily. Well, there is pressure, yeah, but I feel like it's an opportunity for everyone to step up as a whole, the young guys, me, myself. It's just everyone has a new role now. We can't just rely on those that were ahead of us to do it now. It's our time. First, I guess, where did the nickname Snacks come from? Uh, my first year here, I had a little weight on me. <laughs> and it just stuck with me. <laughs> but you've lost that weight now, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Do you like that nickname then, or uh, are you just kind of okay with it? Uh, now I like it. Back then, I really didn't. <laughs> so you use it as motivation, maybe? Uh, no, nah, not really. It's just... They kept calling me, so I just stuck with it. I guess there's a chance you could play the star position. You're obviously filling some pretty big shoes there. What, what do you like about that spot? Uh, I just get to be a football player, make plays. Well, what did you learn from watching Petey play that? Uh, I learned more off the field and on the field, just how to be a pro football player, take notes and learn the offense before you see it. 
what's the next step you want to take to where you'll feel comfortable getting that increase in reps in game this next season? Uh, just being dominant, like down there in the box on the line of scrimmage. Randall, how much did that injury, I guess maybe in camp or early in the season, how much did that hold you back, maybe keep you from playing more last year? Uh, it was like six to seven weeks. And it kept you out? Yeah. yeah. Did you feel like you you played at a pretty good level later in the year, though? Were you pretty pleased how yeah. things came along? Yeah, I was. Anything else? What are your favorite snacks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fruit snacks, uh, hot fries. Hot fries. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it.